everybody. This is Dr. Emily Sherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in New Jersey. Thanks for joining us as we keep working our way down the Atlantic coastline. As we've been seeing, the states of the East Coast are all facing very different challenges. And New Jersey, for you, this is once again a distinct outlook. First, let's talk about changes in the season. Your frost-free season is going to increase in a pretty even way across the state. You're looking at spring thaw about two, two and a half weeks earlier, fall frost two, two and a half weeks later. So around a full month longer growing season by 2050. Now from a gardener's perspective here in the garden state, it's interesting to note that you have little projected change in your hardiness zone. And let's go over to the USDA's projected hardiness zones. Just a second. So if we look over here, let's check out the key. This shows plant hardiness zones from the 80s to the late aughts. And you can see that uh, New Jersey historically has been mostly in zone seven, a little bit of zone six up here by the northern border. And if we go over to uh, our 2050 projection for uh, slightly reduced emissions, very reasonable lowered emissions estimate, which is in line with our current legislation, our country's current direction, we do notice some changes. You'll see that here by New York City and over by Philadelphia, you move towards zone eight, but the majority of the state is going to remain in uh, zone seven. So those winters will be shorter, much of the state, they won't be much milder. And this is very good news for a lot of your inland trees. A lot of your inland mature plants, the hardiness zone is not changing. So the health of your plants isn't gonna change substantially. Very good news. Uh, that's a good part of the forecast, this relative stability. But now we're gonna look at what's gonna happen to the summers. We're gonna look over to the USDA heat map and check out your projected summer changes. I'm gonna warn you that that's gonna be a little bit more extreme. All right, so here we are in New Jersey right now. Let's look at the key on this uh, USDA heat map. You can see this shows the number of days, well, it doesn't say that, but it does show the number of days over 86 degrees F from um, 1980 to the late aughts. You can see that in New Jersey, historically, there's this real distinct climb where you've got the cooler half of the state and the warmer half of the state. You're dealing with a summer, maybe two months, over 86 right now in Southern New Jersey, cooler by the ocean. Up here, looking at uh, less than a month of really warm temperatures. But if we look over to the projection for 2050, we see that that's gonna change pretty dramatically. The entire state is going to be warmer and we see this new color come up, this red color, especially over across the river from Philadelphia, indicating up to 120 days a year over 86 degrees. And that's a little bit alarming to think about, right? That's a big change. So before we get too shocked as we think about this very different summer, I wanna pull out, we're gonna pull back, we're gonna look back at contemporary summer temperatures, zoom out a little bit and go down to where we start to see that kind of peach pattern, that darker yellow, lighter red. And we'll see that it's here in the Carolinas, down in this cool pocket here by Charleston too, you see that same color pattern. All right, going back up to New Jersey, getting the 2050 forecast lit up on there. We do notice still that there's gonna be some difference in the state with the cooler Northern half and the warmer Southern half, but the length of the summer and the extent of days where you're gonna require air conditioning, you should expect dramatic changes. And that's really what we're looking at there is one of the more dramatic summer heat increases that we've ever seen in a state level forecast. But if we think about it rationally, if we think about it in terms of being like the summers are in the Carolinas, it's easier to make sure that the change doesn't seem bigger in your head than it really is. It'll be a lot warmer than it is today in New Jersey, but people have lived in the Carolinas for a long time. It's not like that's some monstrous alien environment, right? As we're getting into this headspace where we're looking at things that are pretty big, that are pretty concerning and trying to stay rational about them, 
I do think we need to take a look at sea level rise. We're trying to build a picture of what the future is gonna look like in New Jersey. And I wanna show you, we're looking at a radically different coastline in some parts of the state. We're gonna model two feet of sea level rise, which is not an out there number for 2050. We're expecting a foot or two. In just a second, as we move over to the NOAA sea level rise viewer. All right, so right now, this is showing the current mean higher high water mark. So this is where the water tends to go today. And you can see that NOAA has a bunch of areas of interest around New Jersey that you can come in here and check out for yourself. If we move the mean higher high water mark up to one foot, up to two feet, even from a distance view, you can see that there's a lot of coastline changes. A lot of low-lying areas of the state are going to be inundated. And let's zoom in a little bit and get a closer look at that. This area here, this is looks like my kind of place, frankly. This beautiful, um, smaller towns, agricultural area. And these agricultural areas, they're important to our nation. Right now we can see that they're already vulnerable to flooding. We can see that with two feet, you're going to be having substantial inundation of these coastal areas. We look in these areas, they're currently, um, you know, they're inhabited. A lot of the houses that you see, if you zoom in here are probably fish camps, I'm assuming, but more of it, it's, it's places where people have made their lives. And we can't look away from this. This is the area I wanted to look at here. This township here, it's hard to imagine that this road here, which is clearly a major connecting road for people in the area, is going to actually continue to exist with uh, two feet of sea level rise. There are a number of people in New Jersey, a number of these outlying rural communities that Frankly, they strike a chord with me. People are going to need to move. They're going to need to be relocated. It's very serious. If we zoom back out and uh, look inland, we can see that there's not going to be huge direct impacts on a lot of the urban areas, like here across the river from Philadelphia. We will see changes in flooding patterns in populated areas here, we look over in Oakland, and we're going to be losing a lot of the buffer that was wisely designed into many of the more urban areas of the states. A lot of these more urban areas, they have areas that right now are marsh, our uh, nature reserves, our forests, that do take up uh, water from storm, storm surge, water from uh, serious storms, unusual king tides, that sort of thing. Those buffers, the elasticity in the system is gonna be gone by 2050. So while you're not looking at a ton of direct inundation in your urban housing stock, you are looking at increased vulnerability across New Jersey from sea level rise. And I wanna zoom back out for a second and look at Atlantic City with you. So here, Atlantic City is a good way to talk about a real problem here in New Jersey. We can see that with one and two feet of sea level rise, we are starting to see inundation. And for most of the states, I've stopped at two feet because there's not a huge difference when you go to three. With New Jersey, it's really necessary to visualize the coastline with that third foot because that really steps up your level of direct inundation. It's true for Atlantic City, and it's true for places around the New Jersey coast. And it brings us to a really important, more distinct than for other states we've looked at so far threat to New Jersey, which is saltwater inundation. Now, if you live in New Jersey, you've probably heard something about this because of what's happening to the Pine Barrens. Trees are already dying from the saltwater incursion. The salt water, as the sea level rises, it can get into the ground. It impacts the groundwater, which should be fresh water, and it impacts the soil quality. When we model three feet of sea level rise for New Jersey, 
we're getting kind of an indirect look at what land is going to be very vulnerable to the saltwater incursion by 2050. So while you might not be experiencing inundation of sea level rise beyond two feet at 2050, I would anticipate saltwater incursion. If it's underwater at three feet, there's going to be incursion by two feet. I hope that makes sense. If you get yourself back past that three foot coastline, I'm not saying saltwater incursion isn't going to be a problem, but you'll be taking care of yourself. You'll be getting yourself out of the zone where you would expect saltwater incursion to definitely be a big problem. So let's circle back. Let's pull some threads together. In New Jersey, you're looking at shorter winters, but they're not going to be hugely milder for a lot of the state. The summers are going to be substantially longer and substantially hotter, and you're losing a lot of coastline with accompanying concerns about water quality issues and habitat loss, because a lot of that coastline that you're losing is protected wildlife habitat. All of this means there's going to be landscape transformation here, particularly along the coasts. I think it's important to get an idea of what the landscape is transforming into. That can help with the emotional elements about all of this. Any rational person looking at a forecast like this, they're gonna experience what we might wanna call like emotional discomfort, right? Look down at the coast of the Carolinas, if you wanna look at the future and take yourself a good look at the saltwater marshes. That's what a lot of the current New Jersey coastal landscape is going to be shifting towards particularly those coastal areas where the plant hardiness zone is moving up into zone eight. The Carolinas are gonna be changing too. They're gonna to be undergoing transformation away from salt marsh towards mangrove swamp. So if you wanna feel what your future might be like, if you're in coastal New Jersey, you should go down there and check out the salt marsh ecosystem. My understanding is that it has very good recreational use. And you know, there are sea turtles that nest there now in the Carolinas, and they're gonna be moving up the coast as this transformation occurs. They're gonna move as it gets warmer. If you get ready for them, the odds are very good that sea turtles are going to come and nest in New Jersey. So let's wrap this all up. The heart of all of this for New Jersey is that if you want to build resilience in your community, in your home, you need to get yourself into a mindset where you're able to accept change, accept it and really envision it. Because the next 20 years are gonna be intense you're gonna become the edge of the new South. You're gonna be the new place that feels like the American South feels now. Southern Virginia was kind of like the old transition point between the North and the South. Now it's gonna be Southern New Jersey. You look at that new coastline, you make sure you're far enough back from the sea that you're not gonna to suffer too much from the saltwater incursion. And you start thinking about what opportunities this chain presents. Every big change like this, there's gonna be winners and there's gonna be losers. You start thinking about this early so you can be a winner. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe, help get the message out there. There is hope, we can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.